You've arrived here at a critical moment. Tune in on real self-knowledge and creative power. Welcome to the Well Fit with Lockie Stewart podcast. This show aims to help men improve themselves physically, mentally, and emotionally, covering topics of fitness, mindfulness, and spirituality. Good morning. So I'm just putting the topic in here. Uh, right, topic. Dev, what's happening, brother? Put a few people on. Boom. Just putting the topic in there. And at the same time as doing this, I am going to cook some breakfast. I think that's pinned. Is that pinned? Cool. Good morning, everyone who's tuning in. So this morning's topic... Is going to be don't use work as an excuse not to look after yourself. So when we're looking at that, we're talking physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, whatever health you're sort of looking at. But it's something that, you know, I hear time and time again, people use work as this fucking piss poor excuse as to why they can't you know, look after themselves. And the reality is, guys, is that most, don't let me in the kitchen. most people working for other people so the fact that you're sacrificing your own well-being for someone else is fucking ridiculous I, I get that you know you want to be the best employee and get things done but if you're not getting the work you need to get done in the allotted hours you need to start taking responsibility and having those conversations to be like right why am I not getting the work done in this allotted time am I being given too much work can I delegate am I not being you know, efficient during my work hours? Am I getting distracted? Am I on Facebook, Instagram? What is the cause that you're, is allowing work to spill outside of the work hours, right? Then we need to have another look as to, you know, what other reasons leave you to, hey, everyone who's joining, to use work as an excuse for your poor health. You know, people all the time who are overweight, unhealthy, unhappily, emotionally lost, don't have very good relationships, right? Oh, like... Uh, I work so much, you know, works having me doing 60 hour weeks, da 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 da. But at the end of the day, you're choosing to do that. You've allowed it to get to the situation where you're doing those hours. You've allowed yourself to believe that you need to be doing those situations. And especially going for people who are employed on a salary, you're not getting paid for a lot of that. So, what needs to change? Because at the end of the day, and people, I, this really sunk in for me when. I got it told this way, but at the end of the day, we're all replaceable, right? And you're not going to be performing to your best standards if your health's deteriorating, right? If you're not feeling confident in your body, if your energy levels are depleted, right? No worries. Thanks for getting, uh, getting some advice, um, right? You're replaceable. If you're mentally not feeling your best because you're eating poorly, you're not sleeping well, you, other stuff's going wrong in your life, you're not going to be as valuable for to your as uh, to your employer as if you were if you did have all those boxes ticked. Right, so there comes a point in time where you need to say fuck it. Work's no longer ex- an excuse. One of the reasons why I need to look after my health, physical, mental, and emotional, is so I can thrive in the work environment. Okay, because if you don't start looking at it that way, you're not going to create that lifestyle that you want. You're not going to you know, climb the corporate ladder if that's what you're trying to do because there's going to be someone who, you know, does prioritize their health, physical, mental, and emotional, puts the work in, who's going to fly past you. Because as a business owner myself, I know I'm going to be employing people in the future who look after, you know, have a holistic approach to living, who look after their health because I know they're going to be the people who are showing up the most consistently and are thriving to, in order to achieve that. I'm in a job now uh, where I literally can't use it as an excuse as I'm a swim teacher in the pool. Knocks off uh, a little physical activity on my days. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, I'm in the exact same boat as you. I work in, obviously, coaching. So I'm doing physical and mental stuff every single day. So I'm fortunate. But if you want to learn more about that, listen to yesterday's podcast where I'm fortunate with it, but changing your environment can help grow that, right? You've put yourself in an environment where you're around activity, 
right? So you need to find a way to create that environment for yourself so that, once again, as you see, work is not an excuse. It's a, I know it may be a driver because if you're listening and whether you're listening to this back as a podcast, there's going to be people who go, I just don't like exercise. And I get that. Like there's a lot of exercise that I don't enjoy. I like some aspects and I just do that. So you've got to realize and you know, take the time to think about how does being healthy uh, you know, impact or enhance your quality of life? Right? Is it going to improve your energy? Is it going to give you um, more time to play with kids, like more energy to play with kids? Is your emotional well-being you know, going to allow you to be more connected with your partners, uh, your family be a better father, be a better employee? What's it going to give to you? Because often... People say, I just don't want to exercise. I don't want to do the work because I don't really care how I look. But it's not just a physical thing, right? It's an emotional thing as well. It's a a mental thing, right? It's a performance thing. And if you let one area of that slip, it's going to ripple effect into other areas of your life. And I'm fortunate to work with some really... um, business successfully people i'm not going to say holistically successful because in some aspects they're not where they want to be okay but they're trying to do the work because often people when they you know focus on the career all the other areas slip and that's just a a a fact hey anna how you doing so it's really trying to dial down and work out what that holistic approach is for you and how you can live your best or i'm not even gonna say live your best life thrive in your career but not do that at the expense of your fucking health and i get guys i get at times there's going to be times where priorities change and you know you might be in a busy period at work that's fine but it doesn't mean you sacrifice health or you sacrifice your morning routines or you sacrifice you know looking after your own well-being you just modify and adjust it to fit it in in a way that allows you to you know obviously focus on the priorities but then also give yourself that self-care so that you can give 100% to the stuff that is taking your focus at this point in time. Okay, because if you aren't going to you know, shape up to that in 5, 10, 15 years, and you could probably do a little bit of self-reflection right now, how has your health changed over the last five years and has work been a reason that it's sort of you know, been detrimental? It's decreased, your health declined. Because if it is... It's only going to happen again over the next five years unless you start working out a way to prioritize and make it a focus of you know, your daily routine. So I'd love to hear from you guys who are on at the moment what excuses you come up with or how you've overcome using work as an excuse to sort of get a bit more focus on your physical, mental and emotional health on the day-to-day basis. Job now, your words straight to my heart. Need to take action. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, guys. Well, I'm going to jump off, but I want you to think about that. And if you take away anything this week, and I'm listening to my own advice here, like I um, use work as an excuse more so for my relationships than anything because I'm always so busy but that's a choice that I've made. So that's what I'm going to be working on over the next couple of months. But you want to look at it for yourself. Is it now affecting your health? Is it going to affect you long-term? And what about your emotional health? Because guys, we know depression and anxiety are worse now, you know, affecting more people now than ever before in human history. So it's being mindful of where you're at and how you can best support your own growth in the future. I've, I have tried to vocalize my, to my workplace how my health and fitness is important to me. How's that gone, Anna? Has it, uh, has it been a, a positive conversation to have? Has it been impactful? Because I think more and more workplaces now as well are starting to understand. And this is actually, this is a, a, another point. So obviously when I'm coaching people, a lot of people can't train inside business hours uh you know nine to five or eight to four whatever they're working right the the workplace just doesn't allow that but what is funny is that people can make time to you know go see a physio go see a doctor go see all these other things but in in my opinion fitting training in you know if you've got to see a personal trainer or a coach or even just fit it in fitting that in prevents a lot of the other appointments that you need to make 
right? So to me, and the way my mind thinks is obviously I love having a flexible lifestyle. So I don't get, and as my business grows and I start looking to employ people, I don't get why I wouldn't let my staff do stuff during the middle of the day if I know it's going to you know, benefit them and make them come back into the office more productive. Because, you know, I know for myself, if I try and sit in front of a computer or stay in an office for seven, eight hours plus, I'm not going to be that effective. So it's really to me, and I hope this changes and I would love to see it change over the next, you know, five to 10 years where people are allowed to have flexible work hours. They're allowed to go see a personal trainer or a personal coach or um, a new, you know, a dietitian, all that sort of stuff during work hours where it's not like, oh, I'm going to miss too much work. It's like, I need to, you, your boss recommends it because they know you're going to come back into the office more productive, more focused, more energized in a better mindset. And obviously you're going to deliver a better results for them. You're going to perform at a higher level. And I think hopefully that's the way it goes. I would love to see it go that way. Got a few things coming in. Um, they've been pretty supportive. That's awesome, Anna. And I think it's cool that, you know, there's females out there like you who are actually sick of fucking going through the motion and you're actively trying to change it. Like I was saw you in the gym two hours ago, which is awesome looking after your health on a Sunday, right? And yeah, I would say it does help that you work at the health department. I agree. Definitely is a preventative. 100% Jackie. And that's the way we've got to look at it. It's just... If you don't like exercise, there's got to be something that you can learn to love, even if it's going for a walk, putting a podcast in, leaving, walk and watch Netflix if, if you've got to. Like, get on a treadmill, put Netflix on and watch it if that's how much you hate exercise, but at least you're still moving your body, right? You don't want to get to the point where you're 50 years old and because of work, your body is now fallen to shit. You don't want to be that person. I guarantee you right now you might go, I'll deal with that when I get there, but good luck fucking trying to reverse that. That's going to be a lot of hard work, which most people don't want to put in. Yes, I'm talking to them. I've highlighted the fact that it will make me more mentally and emotionally prepared. Exactly. You'll feel more confident in your body. Like the endorphins are released. You just feel good and you feel strong. You feel like you've accomplished something for the day and you're creating new positive habit. And depending on what gym you go to, you get to listen to some good tunes sometimes. Gussie, Aaron from Lululemon dropped into another CrossFit class at AZ. He mentioned they cover one times gym, times studio, health-related class per week for employees. That's so good. Uh, that's, and Lululemon's doing it right. Like I love what Lululemon's uh, about and how they're... Buy, sit, stand, desk, exactly. Do you have one, Gussie? I think... And this is one of the things people are saying, we need to stand sitting is killing us. And they're both, like if you stand too much, it's probably having some bad effects, just like sitting too much is having some bad effects. So it's good to change it up, sit, stand, sit, stand. Um, every couple of hours, get up, go for a walk. Like for me, I can't you know, focus for more than 45 minutes. So whenever I'm you know, sitting down to do some work, which I'll be doing in a minute, once I get off this, I'll set an alarm for 45 minutes because it gives me focus time that I can get up eat, go for a walk, do whatever, and sort of just let my mind switch off, then come back and have another, you know, focus 45 minutes, which is what the goal is. Every employee now has one. Exactly. That's so good. Tommy, how you doing? So thank to everyone who's tuned in. I uh, hope you got some value from it. Obviously, what I'm trying to get across is don't be that person who, you know, gets to 40, 50, 60 years of age, and you look back and you're like, fuck, I've just prioritized work over everything and I use this as an excuse as to why I couldn't fit 30 minutes of exercise in a day why I couldn't you know start working on finding what makes me truly happy or what excites me or focusing on doing things that I love you don't want to be that person and the reason why this is relevant for me now is because I'm I am that person um, not from a health point or a personal development point but more from uh, doing things that I love taking that time off to you know do activities go surfing do all that sort of stuff so that's what I'm trying to work on because I don't want to be that guy when I'm that old who looks back and goes fuck I had the time I had the money I had the resources to do all of that but you know I was busy with work like because at the end of the day most of us are working to create a lifestyle that we want to do or satisfy needs that we have you know and if you're one of the lucky people who love what you do I'm one of those people, you know, that's even better. Okay, so it's easy to get caught up in that, but we do have to find the time to you know, switch off and don't allow work to be an excuse to look after yourself. So guys, if you're enjoying these, remember, send me topics that you'd like to, me to discuss. Head over to the podcast, leave some reviews. Um, 
and we'll see you on tomorrow's live. We'll probably hit the live around nine o'clock tomorrow morning. See you guys. Thank you for listening to the Man That Can Project podcast. My name is Lockie Stewart and I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it helpful. If you did, please take a moment to rate and review the Man That Can Project on your favorite podcast platform. And don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with our newest episodes. We'll see you again next time.